Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, president and founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. Continuing our heart filled with gratitude. This whole week is dedicated to gratitude. I am grateful for retrospectives. I'm grateful that we can have retrospectives. I'm grateful for the way the teams behave during retrospectives. I'm grateful for the learning opportunities that come out of them and for our opportunity to improve and grow. So today I wanted to talk to you about five different things you can do, five different ways that you can do retrospectives that are not part of the Agile Dad class. Here we go. So these are five different retrospectives. I've been doing a lot of research lately because people ask me, Lee, I need more than a sailboat game. I need more than the Four Corners post-it note game. You know, I need something new. So here are five brand new ways that I discovered on how to do retrospectives. Now, some of you may have heard of these before, and some of them have a certain theme that go with them. You might notice the thematic element, but it's fun to mix things up a little bit. So let's start with number one. So number one on my list is called the good, the bad, and the ugly. So of course, the good is what's gone well, which we do more of. The bad is what didn't work, which we avoid, which we avoid repeating. And the ugly is what could have gone better and what could we improve. And I think that you know you can do this in such a way that you just spend 10 to 15 minutes capturing these ideas. And if you have a lot of things captured, you can use dot voting to identify which items you really want to dig in and talk about. Uh, the best way to do that is to give each team member three dots and let them vote on any of the ones that they'd like. And they can put all three on one or they can put them on separate ones. But I think it's a good idea for you to really cover each of the three topics in such a way that the team feels like, uh, you know, their improvement, right? And, and that they can do something actionable and take away some action items from it. If you Google good, bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly retrospective, there's even templates out there that you can download to see it. It's a pretty easy template. It's the same as what went well, what didn't go well, and what can we improve, right? Just a different name, and it gives you some idea. Coming at number two is the timeline retrospective. So while number one was a twist on a traditional, number two is a little different. So before you dive into what went well and what could have gone better, sometimes it's good to establish what actually happened. So sometimes I'll ask the question, what were the events in our timeline that caused us to be this way? And we'll set aside a period of 10 to 15 minutes just to really write events down in chronological order that happened so that we can decide how they positively or negatively affected or impacted what we were doing. If it's something positive, it goes above the timeline. If it's something negative, it goes below the timeline. And a further below or above means it was more or less happy or sad. So this is just a great way to capture everything on a timeline. And then if people want to come to terms of agreement or if they want to move things around, you can have discussion around these things. And if you have too many to have discussion around, once again, you can use dot voting as a way to do this. What I can tell you is this is a good one. I use this one quite a bit uh, and it does capture the events on a timeline. And it's not that hard to do because typically the flow of events do impact how your agile implementation went, right? Or not agile implementation, how you scrum how your sprint went. Thank you. Boy, it's one of those days. So yeah, so this, this definitely will impact how your sprint went and you can see it on a timeline and those events certainly do impact. Coming in at number three is a concept called hot air balloon. So a hot air balloon retrospective is great for looking back at what's happened, but it's also good for looking forward. So using a hot air balloon metaphor, the retrospective is literally split into two parts. Uh, first, you talk about lift. Uh, so it's, it's what went well, what has helped us get things off the ground, ballast, what's pulled us down, what's prevented us from soaring off in our balloon, right? So uh, that, that's all focused on things that have previously happened. For the seconds part, you're spending 10 to 15 minutes capturing uh, potential problems in the future and strategies for addressing these. So are there any storms in the air? What potential problems do we see ahead? And navigation, what can we do to avoid the storms ahead of them to reach our desired destination? What I can tell you is this is different than the four quadrants, but it works really well. So if you're into ballooning or if it's something cool that you could see, it's just a real clear way. And you can look up, once again, hot air balloon retrospective, and you can get a template for this. It's super duper powerful, and it's a great tool that you can use to uh, capture retrospectives differently. So it's not always just the same stale questions. Coming in at number four, one of my favorites. This one's called The Christmas Carol. So uh, it's following after the story, of course, from the, the well-known story by Charles Dickens, where Ebenezer Scrooge, who's visited on Christmas Eve by three ghosts, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Unlike the story, the retrospective is not just for Christmas. It's a good tool to use around the holidays because it's kind of fun, but 
we talk about what were our ghosts of the past? What problems do we see that uh, come from the past that are still a hindrance that are preventing us from doing things moving forward? What are our ghosts of the present? What are our problems that we're experiencing right now? And what ghosts do we see yet to come? Potential problems that we see ahead. And I think that once we identify these, we can talk about and address solutioning some of these problems and set goals to help us move forward. So it's a fun way to do it. And uh, it incorporates the ghost of the past, ghost of the present, ghost yet to come theme, which I think is quite, quite clever, if you will. And then number five, another one that I really love is uh, Three Little Pigs. So if you've never done Three Little Pigs retrospective, this is the cautionary tale for the house builder, right? Uh, but it also re- works really well in a retrospective. So it's good for reflecting on the process within a team, including what's working well, along with what could be improved. And we talk about things that are house of straw items, right? What do we do that just about hangs together, but could easily top over at any moment? The house of stick items. What do we do that is pretty solid, but can be improved? And then the house of brick items. What were some of the things that were rock solid? Uh, therefore, we want to make sure we continue doing it. So it's almost like uh, do more, do less, keep doing, or start, stop, keep doing those kind of things. This retrospective easily identifies items for discussion. It moves things into good categories. It talks about ways where we're prone to error or systems that are unreliable. Gives you a lot of work, a lot to work with here, right? So you can talk about action items that you can address as a team, including the product owner if necessary. It just gives you a lot of different avenues and a lot of different things that are open for discussion. So it works really well. I think the key to running any retrospective effectively is to be engaging. You need to engage the team. You need to find the right format. These can happen online or in person. So every one of them that I just now described are great for doing online, which is really cool. You can do these in Mural or in Miro. You should allow somewhere in a 60-minute neighborhood for this. You don't want to do the whole half-day thing. Ugh, it just makes me crazy, right? Uh, 60 minutes is usually enough. And if the team has more productive things to say, don't stop them. But if within that 60 minutes you find that they're losing you know, uh, interest or that you know, people are drifting, it's okay to end a retrospective early, right? But I usually plan for 60 minutes. Uh, it's a good idea to share the workload, right? Take turns within the team to plan and run the retrospectives. Let the team members take control. Uh, I think that, you know, people shouldn't always have the same person running a retrospective. That way you get different perspectives, different ways of executing and different things out of them. But I think the big takeaway is that you need to establish a safe space. It, it's important that you don't have leadership in a retrospective. It's important to remind the team that the, the prime directive is, to seek out ways that we can improve together as a team, right? Uh, Another thing that I do personally is I don't allow for anonymity. I always capture who added items, what's going on with items, and we discuss and uh, talk about actions that we're taking during the retrospective, what we want to do. I don't document everything that everyone says, but we, we do take goals and actions and things that we want to move forward on, right? And Last but not least, I think the big takeaway from this whole thing is I'm grateful there's so many different ways to do retrospectives. And I encourage you to try out different ways because I think what works for some teams might not work for other teams. So I think it's important for you to try multiple different ways. See what works for you. See what works for your organization. See what works for your teams. And let us know. We'd love to hear more about it. Every single one of these retrospectives that I just mentioned, there are templates for online. They're pretty easy to find. And every one of these work both in an online format as well as an in-person format. So I hope that you'll be engaged and find new and creative ways to improve your retrospectives. Let me know what you found out. I'm curious. I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at lee at agiledad.com. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile. Until next time, do take care.